when that time of planting comes, everyone gets busy. They get busy because they want to plant what they are planning to plant. There are so many crops which you have planned to plant. Some are planting more than one crop like me. Some are only planting a single crop. However, if you are planting so many crops like me, you should have an order. You should plan how you are going to plant them. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you end up getting confused once it rains and or it stabilizes. Hi, I'm the mud farmer from Chipangali district, deep down in the village of Eastern Province. Welcome to my program. Like I always say, I'm not a professional man, but I'm somebody who's so passionate about agriculture, be it animal or crop farming. Today, I thought of looking at two main things, the planting, and of course, I'll touch on the spraying of wheat killer. There are so many crops which you have planned to plant. Like in my case, I'm planting maize, I'm planting groundnuts, I'm planting soybeans, I'm planting beans, I'm planting potatoes, I'm planting sunflower. You can name them. But you should have an order to follow. Because if you don't do that, you end up jumbling everything and then at the end of the day, you get zero. Uh, if I were you, this is the way I usually put them. I'll first start with maize and then I go to groundnuts. That is if I'm planting MGV5, which most people call Charimbana. And then I'll actually go to, uh, go to soya beans. And then if I've got MGV4 groundnuts, I'll plant it. And then the last ones to be planted will be um will be beans and sunflower which i normally plant in the last week of december or the first week of january of course this rain season i will start with maize which i'll be planting in the next few days followed by potatoes so now uh, let's talk about a crop called soybeans a lot of people this year plan to grow soybeans because it had good market. It fetched at a good price the previous season. Hence, a lot of people opting for soybeans. However, there are a few things we need to know before you think of growing soybeans. Before you think of planting soybeans. Before you plant soybeans, you need to inoculate it. So that it has inoculant to add some nutrients which are missing in the soil for uh, for the soybeans. I want to make it as simple as I can. So, how do you go about it? You need to plan. Okay, most of these things, we do them very early in the morning. For example, I come to the field very early in the morning, 04, 05, we are already here. When it's still cool, the temperatures are still low. So now, let's just talk about the inoculations. I know I've done a lot of programs on this one, but this time around, because we are approaching the planting time, so I thought it was important to do more like a refresher. So now, let's talk about inoculating. First of all, you need to have sugar, you need to have inoculant, you need to have water. Why do we have these things? I will break it down step by step. First of all, why do we need sugar? Sugar basically is just a sticker. If you've got any other better sticker than sugar, you can use it. What do I mean by sticker? It's just going to help the inoculant sticking to the seed. Because we need the inoculant to get stuck to, to the seed. Okay, and then we need water. Water, the reason why we need water, we want to actually dissolve the sugar in the water, in the liquid. And the liquid is water. And then, of course, the inoculant. Now, how do we do the inoculation? I've been receiving a lot of calls. A lot of people asking me what they are supposed to do with the remaining inoculated seed. In the first place, you were not supposed to inoculate the entire 50 kgs because the rules of engagement is that you, when you inoculate your seed, you are supposed to use that seed, you are supposed to plant that seed within 24 hours. Here's the thing, here's how you do it. You get your 300 mils of water in a bottle. 
most Coca-Cola Fanta bottles are 300 ml. Then you get three tablespoons of sugar. You mix, you mix, girl. You make that sucrose thing. Okay, you shake it. Okay, you mix. Why, when you mix, you get 10 kg of soya beans. Why are we getting 10, 10, 10 kgs? We want to be inoculating bit by bit. So we, we, we picked 10 kg. So you get the 10 kgs, you put it in the bucket, you get that water, the mixed, the zgoro, the sucrose, which you've mixed water and sugar. You get it and then you put it in your bucket. Are we together? You put it in your bucket, you mix thoroughly, thoroughly, you mix. Okay. I want you to follow very carefully. Okay, you get the soybeans, you put in the bucket. You get the sugar, you, you the, the, the sugar, you put it in the bottle. You get the the water, you put in the box. You mix. You get that mixture. You pour in the in the soybeans. Okay, the soybeans will, will be a little bit wet, okay, and sticky. Now you get your three tablespoons of your inoculant, the powdered inoculant. And then you actually put to your soybeans and then you mix thoroughly. Okay, let's I'm very clear. I didn't say you get the water you pour in the inoculant, no. I said you get the inoculant, you pour on the wet beans, the wet soya beans. And then after that, you start planting one by one. You start planting one by one. It depends on how you want it. Okay, like in our case, this is the field which we are planning to put our soya beans. So how we've done it, as you can see, we've plowed it. Okay, using cows, we've plowed it. So we are actually, what you are doing right now is actually, we are actually uh, breaking all these big, big lumps and then we'll put, um, uh, we'll put our rope and then we'll do the ripping using our hands. What we are going to do is we are actually putting my ropes and then we'll get a hole and then make lines which will act more like rippers and then we'll have to semi-broadcast in that line because we want to increase the plant population because the more the plant population, the better for us. So that's that about inoculating. And then now you cover it lightly. Okay. One, one, one bad thing about soybeans, soybeans is a bit lazy. Okay. When you cover it too much, it won't, it, it won't come out. It will germinate down there, but it, it will fail to come out. So you cover it lightly. You cover it lightly. Okay. This is where the problem comes in when if you want to spray your pre-emergence, the other one which actually destroys the seed, to the, the, the weed seeds. Okay, so you cover it lightly, you cover it lightly, okay, and then you can only plant soybeans if it has rained and then there's moisture in the ground. If it hasn't yet rained, you will need to wait. Unfortunately, you will need to wait because if you plant while it is dry or there's a dry spell and the ground is dry, then you're not, the inoculant will not work the way it's supposed to work. That's that about uh, the, the inoculation. Okay, we've tackled the inoculation. Now, let's tackle the weed killers. First of all, what's the best time to do the weed killing? The best time to spray your weed killer, it's early in the morning between 0405 to somewhere 8, 9. The reason is, this is a time when it's a bit cool. You cannot do, you cannot spray the weed killer during the day at 14 hours, at 12 hours. You need to spray when it's cool. That's when it works better. I think those who, who actually grow tomatoes and stuff like that, they will understand at what time we do, the, we do spray the, the chemicals in the tomatoes. When it's a bit cool and then those insects actually try to come out that's when you actually spray when they're just coming out you spray it's actually the same theory with the weed killer so now let's break it down the kind of weed killers i'm talking about there are actually three main weed killers on the market some are called pre-emergence some are called post-emergence those which are called pre, which means they are actually sprayed before or in the early stages. Those that are called post, they are actually sprayed when the, the weeds have actually come out. So now, let me look at the first one, which usually is the first one to be sprayed, which is called a non-selective weed killer. The main active ingredient is glyphosate. This weed killer kills anything green. It will be killed. 
anything green, it will be killed. And what's the best time to, to use this weed killer? This weed killer is usually used when um, there's an emergency. For example, it has rained. You are busy with some other stuff. It has rained. Okay. And then the weeds have come out. So what have you done? You've actually uh, made your reaping. You've done your reaper. Your lines. Your lines. Without actually doing anything. Just in the bush like this. And then you do your reaping. So what you do is after doing your reaping. You plant. You cover your seeds lightly. And then you spray your weed killer. Okay. The same day or in the next uh, two days. In the next 48 hours. That's the only time you can spray. Because otherwise, if you delay, what will happen is you end up burning your own seed because it has already germinated. So, non-selective is usually good or best applied when uh, uh, where you want to plant their weeds. You just do your reaping or you've actually done your ridges but there are some greens in there. Immediately after planting, you actually spray. That's the first step, which is non-selective glyphosate. The second one is uh, it, it kills the seeds to the weeds. Okay. And at what, at what time is this sprayed? This is usually sprayed when you've actually done your ridges or you've actually cleared your field. There are no weeds. There are no, there's nothing green and then there's nothing. Okay. So what you do is you actually, after plant, immediately after planting, you actually spray. Okay, why do we spray this one? It holds the seeds, it kills, it destroys the seeds to the weeds, which means all the, all the weeds seeds will be killed, will die. But you need to be very, very careful because if you didn't cover your seed nicely, it will also be damaged, it won't germinate. This one, you would discover that weeds, it will take time for weeds to start showing in your field. It's actually the best if used in soya. But if you have covered your soya beans nicely, because if you haven't, and then that spray touches your seed, you have challenges because your seed will not germinate. But it's usually best because sometimes if you are lucky, you just have to spray that spray and then you, you forget about everything. Okay, you won't weed again. Because the way, the way soya beans is, the moment it, when it grows bigger, it covers and then no weeds will actually come in your field. That's the second type. Okay, let me go through again the second type. You actually spray where the land is clear. There are no weeds, there are nothing green. You plant, then you cover your seed nicely, and then you spray so that it kills all the seeds to the weeds that come with the winds. Okay, but that doesn't mean they will not grow. They might grow, but most of it will have died. The third one is what we call the selected one, where it only selects the the crop which you, you 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 bought it for okay for example weed killer for men's weed killer for soybeans are different so it will just save the same crop which you bought it for how do how, how do you apply this you apply this when weeds appear people were asking me at one point am i supposed to to spray snowmagogo at one point am i supposed to, to spray simba you only spray once weeds appear, that's when you spray. What is going to happen is uh, the weeds will die. Your crop will actually survive. There are two types of um, weed killers that you can apply in, in soybeans. Okay, some you need that small sachet. The razor, the, the snow soya, like snow magogi, you need that. But the simba, you don't need that. Okay, so you need to understand. A lot of people have asked me, a lot of people have asked me, I've bought this weed killer. What's the dosage? I would not know until I read because a manufacturer is the best person who knows that product. So always invest your time in reading. When you buy your seed, read. When you buy your chemical, read. It's very, very important. Let's do a little bit of a recap. I said it's always best to spray in the morning, whether it be it insecticide, whatever you want to spray. This goes to beans as well. When you want to spray your beans, spray in the morning. 
very early in the morning. When you want to spray your foliar fertilizer, spray in the morning. People have been asking me about foliar fertilizers. What's the dosage? The answer is always the same. I don't know until I read because I'm not the person who manufactured that stuff. So not until I read, that's when I can actually know. So the best you can do is once you read, once you buy, after buying, read what is needed there and then follow those instructions. Mostly and usually, foliars are sprayed every 14 to 21 days. There are a lot of foliars on the market. Pick what best suits you and then read. Once you read, you have no challenges. That's the way it works. But if it's, if it's beans, beans, when you are spraying with insecticide, like we always say, prevention is better than cure. If it's beans, you are spraying with insecticide, spray every week, every week, so that you do some prevention. If you've got any question concerning what I've talked about, you are free to get in touch with me. My numbers are always the same. 0977 or 0967-8511-96 or 0966-987051 0966-987051 or my Facebook page. By the way, the same numbers are on WhatsApp. You can actually send me a WhatsApp or send me a text message on the same. If you're on social media, on Facebook, my, 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 my username is Demat Farmer Kapwata. Demat Farmer Kapwata. The space mad space farmer space Kapwata. On YouTube, mad farmer Kapwata. Mad farmer Kapwata. Let's get chatting. Let's get talking. Please, if you want to get in touch with me, especially on text or WhatsApp, avoid greetings. Avoid greetings. Because I receive so many text messages. So many WhatsApp messages. So it will be quite unfair for me to spend two days. Hi, how are you? How are you kids? Blah, blah. It takes too much time. So I'm not saying you can't greet me. You can greet me and then go straight to the point. Mad farmer, how are you? And then you get straight to the point. Not waiting for me to respond. I will not respond. Because uh, there are a lot of messages that come in. Thank you so much for watching my program. Please keep it on this channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.